Well, at this point, we, we, we're going to the build debate. And you'll find out what the debate's about in due course. But nobody better to discuss the strengths and weaknesses of this technique as the great actor manager, Ted Dietrich. Thank you very much. Uh, it's a pleasure for me to be here. Uh, the topic um, I'm speaking on, I've really got about four things uh, to say here, Frank. You gave me a lot of assignment for uh, five minutes. Um, I don't have any uh, disclosures here, although I will tell you that for the last five years I've been working uh, on this project. Um, we have done all the preclinical studies leading to an ID application at the Arizona Heart Institute, extensive uh, work in the porcine model, uh, histology, and so forth, which I'm not going to uh, cover today. This is a new concept, and obviously it's uh, quite controversial because it seems unbelievable. When I saw the first case of this uh, coming out of Paris uh, three or four years ago, I said this, uh, this can't really be. But the truth of it is it's based upon physics and flow modulation coming from a, a group of very bright uh, scientists and engineers in, in Belgium. And so I think it does uh, deserve uh, some good exploration, which we have been doing. Uh, just to answer the question, how does it work, uh, you've heard a couple of explanations already, but just to uh, kind of give you a little better idea about this, uh, it causes a progressive decrease in the vorticity within the aneurysm. And if you, the pointer here, I guess we don't have a pointer. Um, if you know the, uh, what happens in these aneurysms with the vortex pressure, that's what damages the, okay, that's what damages the, um, Inema and causes uh, the expansion. Uh, and what this uh, does then is to modulate this. Instead of having the turbulent flow you see here, okay, I'm sorry, turbulent flow you see here, uh, what it does is to regulate that and it turns the flow with the modulator uh, and laminates this flow into the side branches. When you look at this histology of these, uh, in the experimental porcine, the enema comes down here, and at this point with the lamination code, is, there's very little uh, enema hyperplasia. So without the modulator, you have the vortex and the damage with the modulator. You then have that lamination of flow, and with this, you then get the layering that occurs. Now, we have uh, usually uh, looked at the these uh, in terms of wanting to put a pressure uh, sensor in. You, we went through that years ago. Uh, but as Shreve just showed you, in these, these are actual cases of finite analysis of, of actual cases. And what happens in here with the multi, out the multi-layer stent, you have this high pressure zone, which then is eliminated with the multi-layer uh, flow divider. In addition, the most important thing is the stress, because you have the stress which can measure in finite analysis, and with the flow modular, that stress is actually uh, uh, gone. Now, we usually think in following these patients, looking at diameters. That probably is not the best way. Uh, we probably now should be looking more accurately at CT volume measurements, serial measurements. And one paper showed in stent graphs in 27, 37 patients here, this slight increase in the volume, and then out here as the time goes on, the volume down. We looked at 20 patients with the multilayer stent, the same thing occurs. We have a slight increase in the volume here, and, that, and then that volume goes down, looking at this, uh, with these CT measurements. The same thing occurs in thrombus volume. In this set of uh, patients here with stent grass, volume up a little bit, and then here you see the change. And so we see the same thing here. Well, now what about experience and commentator? Another point I'm assigned to give here. Yesterday we had a great morning uh, talking about the ascending order and certainly ground uh, zero and the ascending is the greatest challenge. So uh, about a, a year ago I began to look at the ascending order because this would obviously be the most difficult. You have the sinus of valves, the coronary arteries, uh, you've got the sinotubular junction here, all the things we talked about all morning uh, yesterday. This has to be the most com uh, complex area. Uh, for the possibility to deliver. So could we deliver this stent then in a sub position? And here's our first work in the porcine model. You see the catheters down here at the, at the level. Uh, you see the acid in the order. Now the multilayer modular stent is placed here at the level and you see the coronary arteries here, branch vessels here, uh, and it proved that we could actually uh, do this. So this is the first case of, of, 
uh, done now three months ago. 54-year-old gentleman, enlarging aneurysm, they asked any order, single kidney, had some blood dyscrasias, uh, not a good candidate. So we went to Italy, and here is, is on the table. The wire is passed uh, across into the, uh, the, across the valve into the ventricle under GE control. Uh, here is the multilayer stent at the time of delivery, right at the sinus of the Valsalva. Uh, you can see here what it looked like in the reconstruction a day later. Uh, and then on uh, Monday of this last week, uh, had the patient come for his three-month study. Here he is, uh, the coronary arteries are wide open here, the graft coming across in position, and the aneurysm uh, is excluded. So I uh, answer the question in terms of the bait, will they make branch grafts unnecessary? Well, I think the conclusion is this is technology that's under evolution. We're studying this. I think it has tremendous potentials. But certainly complex aortic disease will always require multiple therapeutic options, at least with the technology we have today. Thank you for your attention.